All right, IED, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking a look at uh, 3D modeling the carabiner pin uh, cap, the front cap, and just the cap, not the actually grippy part on the front. And uh, here's a general idea of what the cap looks like and the dimensions. What we should have done before we got into this is we should have taken a caliper and carefully measured all of the individual pieces of information that we're going to need in order to create this 3D model. So some of these are go into a lot of detail and whenever I first ask you to give me the dimensions a lot of times people will just give me the the depth the width and the height and they're like okay well I'm good to go uh, and then whenever you get to the actual 3D design part of it you're like well wait a minute what exactly was the length like for example of this uh this depth right here from the 0 0.03 inches from the curve of the cap down to the bottom part uh, and people just didn't write it down and it's easy to overlook so uh i and i can't even guarantee that i've actually got all the measurements here we could get in the start of this and then just be like whoops uh i guess we'll have to go measure that out if it is then i'm sorry and we'll fix it um so there are two small indentions. There's one right here for this uh, detailed view, and then there's another one on the other side, and that has a divot of 0 0.063 inches. So we're going to need both of these pieces of information. Uh, also, there are roughly three diameters that we're going to have to deal with. The front end of the cap, which would be like this part right here, uh, has a front diameter of 0.125 inches. Uh, the second one, which is right here at the end of the cap, is going to be a diameter of 0.535 inches. And the big radius at the end, this is the tallest one, uh, will have a radius of 0.6 inches. And I want to try to think of a thoughtful way to do this design. Like, I don't want to make a whole bunch of unnecessary steps. There's a ton of different ways to do this, and there is no right way, uh, but there is always a better way. So uh, we're going to try to do this with as few steps as possible to try to make it as efficient as it possibly can. The less steps that you make, the easier it is to modify if you needed to make changes down the road. So putting some effort into the thought process on how to get this done uh, will make a big difference in any future modifications that you might have to make. Uh, in the case of the carabiner pin, you might just say, you know what, I will never see this again. And that may be true, but if you're actually doing a design uh, in real life and you have to make some modifications and you have to do it quick, then having an easy design workflow can make your life so much easier. So without further ado, let's get started and let's see what's going to happen. I think that I want to use the revolve command and I'm going to try to be bold and I'm going to try to use all of this in one revolve. So I'm going to just make a sketch going all the way around like this. Uh, and then we're going to use Revolve and just rotate the thing all the way through. Uh, that way, whenever I do like the shell command, I only have to worry about clicking it once, and then we're good to go whenever we hollow out the inside. So let's do it. I'm going to create a new part. So I'm going to hit Create Part Studio. It should give me a nice blank screen. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to call it uh, Pin Cap. I think I've already got this made as Pin Front Cap, but I'm going to rename it and just call it pin cap and we're going to see what we can do all right i'm going to go to the top view and we're going to click sketch and click on the top plane and we're going to start at the origin now um let's see here it might be helpful let's go back to the drawing and let's see what we've got here um the first let's zoom in the first uh distance right here is 0.125 inches so what we're going to do for that, oops, wrong one, is we're going to make that half of the number. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to go 0.125 divided by 2. And that's going to cut the number automatically in half. And as you can see, it's going to be kind of like a, it's, it's a really small number. So you're going to have to zoom in on the mouse wheel uh, a little bit. And from there, Let's go ahead and see exactly how far we need to go. And I think this is where I'm going to say that I probably don't have that piece of information uh, recorded on the distance here. Because we're going to need to go from this corner to this corner uh, in order to get that point uh, written out. So let's add a dimension right here. Let's see if we can actually get this to go. I'm going to click from here to here. And it looks like that's 0 0.560 inches. All right, so that's what we're going to need to do back to the pin cap 
and we're going to create another line down on the bottom and we're going to make that 0 0.560 inches so you're going to see 0 0.56 I'm going to double check make sure I didn't goof that up yeah 0 0.560 all right so now the next part we're going to make uh, and move up to the top part of the cap and that's going to be this radius value so we're looking at the uh, the front radius which is 0.535 so I'm going to go back and I'm not going to use 0.535 because that's the whole uh, diameter so I'm going to only I'm going to cut that in half so it's going to be 0.535 divided by 2. Notice that I'm not actually like putting the exact number in the calculator. Onshape will do these calculations for you. So take advantage of that. You don't actually have to do it. If you know you're cutting it in half, just type in divide by 2. All right. And then the next part is we're going to curve this around. Now, this is an intro to engineering class, and we're not really going to get into like design radiuses and stuff like that. So just click the three-point arc and click on the top left and then click on the bottom right and make this curve about where you want it to go. So, you know, whatever looks good for you. Uh, let's go with like um, a radius of about 1.75-ish. I don't know. Just click there. Looks like a curve. We're good. All right. So you're going to have the front part of your pin created as a sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep going. So we're going to keep sketching all the way out this way. And then we're going to revolve at the very end. We're just going to keep making this sketch. So uh, we're going to go back and we're going to see what else do we need. Well, uh, we need to go down a very small distance of 0 0.03 inches, and then we're going to try to go across 0 0.820 inches. Let's see if I can remember that. So we're just going to create a sketch, uh, create a line, and we're going to go down, hand type in 0 0.03, enter, and then we're going to go across and then type in 0.8, enter. And then I'm going to hit escape to get out of the line tool. And yeah, that looks reasonable. That looks reasonable. So I'm going to go back to my drawing. And we're going to go up. And then we're going to go up 0 0.063. So um, you go back to the line tool. A lot of moving back and forth on this. If you were... Uh, if, if this was not virtual uh, learning, I would have the dimension sheet printed out so I could just look at it as a reference back and forth. For right now, though, I have to sit there and like click back and forth between the two to get the references. Now that I mentioned that, I've already forgotten which one, <laughs> what the dimension was. So what is that? Uh, 0 0.063. Type it in before you forget. I'm going to click. We're going to go up. Okay, we're going to go up. Point. 0, 0.063. All right. The next distance is going to go across, and it's going to go across 0 0.085. So, and then it's going to go back down, and then across 0 0.410. So 0 0.085, 0 0.410. So we're going to go across. Poor potato computer. Here we go. 0 0.085. Enter. And then we're going to go right back down here. Now, notice that it's not going to like instantly snap into place. You can move your mouse over. If you've got the line tool and it's extending out this way, you can move your mouse over to this position where it snaps into place, and then you can drag it across, and it'll make this horizontal line, and it'll automatically snap it into place to be a perfect square. You don't have to hand type in 0 0.063 again. You can if you want to, but it, you have that option available to you to be able to do. Uh, I've already forgotten the dimensions, so I'm going to go back and look. 0. 0.410. They always say measure twice, cut once. It's, so for me, it's uh, look twice and then click once. 0. 0.410. Enter. All right. Let's look out and let's see if this actually looks decent. So I'm looking at the sketch. and uh, Now we're just going to go back down and use the line tool to finish it up to give yourself a solid shape. All the way around. You should actually get a uh, blue shape all the way around. Now we're going to, this part looks like a little bit of a mess, but we don't really need those dimensions uh, out here. Because we, if we wanted it to look good, we would make a drawing of it. Now some of these things I don't need. So like this line that extends all the way up, I don't really actually need this. So I'm going to use the snipping tool or the trim tool 
and I'm going to click on it. looks like a pair of scissors, and just click on this, and you should still keep that blue shaded area inside. Uh, it shouldn't go white. If it went white, what happens is you don't have all of these points actually connected to each other, and there's an open space somewhere. So if you try to do this sketch and you get a white area on the inside, double check and make sure that all of these points are connected to each other. Sometimes if you zoom in really far, you might find out that they didn't actually do a didn't connect the way they should. Onshape is good about actually snapping these things into place with each other, uh, but there are other 3D programs like Inventor where it's a little bit trickier on whether you actually connected them together or not. So it, I'll always double check that and make sure. I'm gonna finish my sketch, and then we're gonna go to the top view, kind of make it look, there we go, our, our isometric view. And we're gonna click the revolve command, and we're gonna revolve this surface. We're gonna click on this surface. And then the next thing is we're going to click on the revolve axis, and you're going to use the inside of the pin. And whenever you click on it, it should revolve all the way around. And that looks decent. Uh, click the green check mark, and you're going to have a carabiner front part. The next thing we need to do is we just need to hollow it out. Uh, and my best advice to you is to just kind of pick whatever looks good. You can measure the thickness of it, but um, you want the end of the nozzle to actually look good. I think I'm going to try uh, 0 0.025. So I'm going to click the shell button. I'm going to, you want to click on the faces that you want to remove. So I want to hollow out this face and I want to go around and I want to hollow out the front face too. So I'm going to make sure I click on this guy as well. And the shell thickness, I'm going to make 0 0.025 inches. And I'm going to click the green check mark. You should actually get a hollow point here, and then check the other side. Make sure you've got a hollow point over there. And congratulations, you have the front cap of the carabiner pin. Um, there is some threads that is over here, but since Onshape is kind of dumb when it comes to threading, I'm not going to include that as actually part of the grade. Uh, if you want to use the thread tool from a previous video, Thread Creator, uh, you can use that and create threads for the front, but I'm not going to be grading it. Uh, if you're not my student, check with your teacher on whether they are going to grade the threads or not. Um, I'm, you know, that's up to everybody, and for me, I'm saying, eh, don't worry about it. Uh, but that's how it works, and there's the front pin, and you guys have a great day, and I'll talk at you later.